Thank you for being here. The mic is yours. Yes, you can use this one. I won't take it out. Hi guys, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, I want to say thank you to Nicola, to George for inviting me. Thank you for you guys coming here, taking yourself serious, taking your business serious. My name is Nahar Geva. I am the CEO and founder of Zika Analytics. Zika Analytics is a software that provides the data analytics about eBay and also about uh, AliExpress. It shows you basically everything you need to know about uh, taking the right decision. And in this uh, presentation today, in the next 30 minutes, I will try to summarize for you what happened in 2018 in the e-commerce industry and what is going to happen, how we are going to handle uh, the year of 2019 correctly. Beside that, um, I want to say uh, one thing before I start. Uh, I will ask you a few questions. I want to know who are you. I want to know if you are beginners, if you already have a business. So I will ask you a few questions. So guys, who is here in the audience already have a business that generate profit? Just raise your hand up. OK, great. And how many of you just thinking about starting or already started learn something? Okay, so there is a lot of people that know this and know this. All right, um, let's see if the presentation started. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let me just check this uh, pointer. All right, one second. Okay, so e-commerce in 2018, 2019. I already told you about myself, so I will skip it. So what happened in 2018? Why it is very important to understand what happened in 2018? Because 2018 was one of the most intense years of e-commerce. For around five to seven years, there was a constant growth. A lot of opportunity seekers came into the market. They just tried to run Amazon business, eBay business, Shopify business, but they didn't took it serious. And it's affect, it's affect the industry. It's affect the platforms like Amazon, like Shopify, and so on. Now, it's a great lesson for everyone, for, for all the beginners here that in this uh, conference, to understand why the platforms like Amazon, like uh, uh, Shopify, and eBay took the steps that I will tell you about them now and learn from it for 2019. So let's start with Amazon. So. Uh, before I speak about Amazon, how many people here selling on Amazon? So I see there are a lot of people selling on Amazon here. How many people got affected from the changes Amazon made, from, from removing reviews, from downgrading their product ranking? I see here all the serious guys with their hand up. Great. So what happens? Like I say, those opportunity seekers just step in, didn't took their business serious for the last five years. They start selling on Amazon. They start list products fake reviews, handle customer service wrong, and do many other ways to manipulate Amazon system. What happens? Amazon came to the point that they say it's enough. So they start to remove reviews, downgrade listings, and so on. It's very interesting because it's not only happened in Amazon, all those changes. It happens in Amazon, Facebook, eBay, and, and Shopify in the same year. Let's see what happened with eBay. So eBay, and I'm talking about eBay dropshipping. How many people here doing eBay dropshipping? Retail arbitrage. All right, I see many people, great. So eBay, with a kind of the same uh, step, what happened? They saw that many, many new sellers coming into the market, dropshipping from Amazon to eBay. Again, the same story with eBay. Handling customer service wrong and uh, just running their business in a way that it's harm eBay platform. And what eBay did, they start to downgrade stores of dropshippers, close stores, and just take a lot of steps to make the life of the dropshippers harder. Now, mainly the sellers that got affected in eBay were either beginners or people that did uh, arbitrage, dropshipping arbitrage. If, if you don't know what is dropshipping arbitrage, it's basically finding products from the platforms like Amazon and sell them on eBay. But uh, in the end, like in Amazon, it's affect also serious sellers. Let's move to okay, So Facebook, it's a li little bit different story. Facebook had uh, problems 
with the, with the law in 2018, but still, after many years of, of uh, people who are selling on Shopify, promoting the products on Facebook, the buyers got used to the ads, they get used to, to marketing, they, they kind of, they get blind. They, and, and I'm asking you guys, if you are seeing ad today on Facebook, what is, the, what is the first things you do? You skip it, right? So this is what happened, plus Facebook algorithm change and it's become more expensive to sell on Facebook. Shopify uh, generate a lot of new sellers which are trying, but just trying without to take their business serious and the same results also here. Now, for all the beginners here and for everyone here, these three situations in 2018, it's a great lesson for how to make business. Why? What we are seeing here, we're seeing people, I hope you are here taking your business serious and taking yourself serious and you are, you are willing to invest, that's trying to do things that don't, that don't do these things serious and the final result is that the whole market, the whole industry got harm of it. So I want to say, guys, uh, and it's a great opportunity to say it's all about taking responsibilities. If you want to be successful, if you want to do something serious with yourself, with your business, you have to take responsibilities on yourself, responsibility on how you managing your business, and not only this, responsibility on your action. Even if you went and you took a course for some mentor and you came uh, and you came with a lot of expectation, it didn't work out, don't blame this course, don't blame this mentor. You are responsible for everything that happens in your life, that happens in your business. Now, let's speak about something a little bit more positive because we've been speaking about few negative things here which are a great lesson for us. E-commerce in 2019, some facts that will make you happy. So with all the hard things that happened in 2018, we are still in a constant growth. Most of the people still buying offline. The Asian markets are growing. More people start to buy things mobile and we still have huge potential for the people who really want to build a serious business, who really want to do something serious with themselves. So as you can see here, uh, we can, you don't see it right, but it's showing the, the graph from 2015 to, till 2019, so it's growing, but the main market that's growing is the Asian market, the Chinese market. It's a huge market with a lot of suppliers, manufacturer, and a lot of bu buying power. And this is what leading the growth of, of uh, e-commerce in 2019. However, still Europe and East Europe and uh, South Europe and US and South America are still very virgin markets. People are not as advanced as in the US or other countries. So it's just showing you that the population, that statistically the, the potential in this type of business is huge. Now, second thing that is very important is mobile payments. More and more people start to purchase their products through their mobile. Now, I don't know uh, what is your ages. We have different people in different ages here, but I can tell you about myself. I'm 29 years old, and I myself don't buy too many things in the, in the mobile, but when I look on 15, 16, 17 years old kids, they're 24 seven in their mobile. They playing, they communicating, and they purchasing everything. Now imagine what will happen in 10 years, those 15 years, kids will be 25, they will have money, they will have the knowledge, the growth in the e-commerce business will be huge. People buying things on mobile, this will be huge. It's already huge, but imagine what will happen in 10 years. Now, there is one very important thing each and one of you should know and should also take serious, because when you start an e-commerce business, I know it's super overwhelming and there is so many things to learn and we are super excited to start and to get to result. But there is something you should stick to in your life, whatever you do, doesn't matter if it's e-commerce or any other business. And this is data analytics. You can't take a decision without to be sure that you checked the sales history, competition, 
prices and so on, sell-through rate, uh, uh, successful listings, and so on. Each platform is a little bit different. If you're selling on Shopify, so you are more, uh, uh, you focus on a different parameters, like, like if it's a wow product, or like how much will be the, the cost of the advertising, or if it's a niche product. If you're selling on Amazon, it's more, ab more about the competition in Amazon. And if you're selling on eBay, it's, and you're doing drop shipping, it's more about finding those fast opportunities based on demand and competition. But in the end, it's all come to the same point, and that you need to stick to the numbers. Follow the numbers. Now, I want to give you a, a short, a quick overview to Zeek Analytics. Uh, as I say, Zeek show you data from AliExpress and from eBay. And I want to show you today what you can see before you even invest a penny in marketing, in goods, or so on. So let's start. Oh my God, it's not so clear as I can see here, but I will try to explain as much as I can. So, we are looking on product research. You can search of AliExpress. You can search any keyword you want on uh, AliExpress. Let's say you want to sell sunglasses. You can't see it here because it's very blurry, but uh, I was searching sunglasses. And then you can see up there in the right corner how much sales sunglasses generate on AliExpress in the last six months to 30 days. You can see the sold items, you can see the sell-through rate, the successful listing, the top 10 sellers on AliExpress, the average product price, you can see a graph, you can see the top selling countries. Guys, all this information is available for you online before you invest penny in anything you want to do, okay? You can see the top countries. For example, we can see here up uh, from sunglasses, the Russian Federation and United States, are the biggest buyers of sunglasses on AliExpress. We can see the top selling products, and we can see the title, the prices, and so on, reviews, votes from AliExpress. And we can even see the information based on a specific product. If you check a specific product, you can see how many sales it generated in the last 30 days to six months. You can see uh, what are the top selling countries and how long this seller selling on AliExpress. So before you are uh, in a rush to take decision, check, you have the time, no one is running after you. It's very important that you take smart decisions based on data. Then you can do comparison. Now, if you are selling on Shopify, or if you are doing uh, uh, Google Shopping uh, marketing, for example, it will be very helpful for you to understand what is selling on AliExpress, what is selling on eBay, how much, is, how much sales is generated in the United States, what are the keywords, and so on, that drive the traffic, and so on. So you can run search on AliExpress, see the result, the statistics, the number from AliExpress, and then in one click, see the same results from eBay, based on the country you're selling. Again, see the sell through rate, the sales earning, the last 30 days, eBay is only 30 days. You can see the, the biggest sellers, the most selling items, and all the things you need to know to make smart decisions. Now, I want to ask the advanced people here. How many of you doing market research or any research before you decide to list product to your Amazon store or to start promote product on Shopify? What is your name? Nikolai. Nikolai, can you tell us what you're selling on Amazon, right? What are you doing before you decide to sell product on Amazon? Maybe it's a secret, but it, it's a little interesting to know. No, it's pretty basic stuff. We, we would try and analyze uh, niches, niches and uh, where there is not too much competition and still there are demand signals. Then we go back and try to search for suppliers. If we, can, if, if we have a good idea, we invest some time. We find how to improve it, how to do something better than what's available already. If we don't uh, find anything, we go back and we keep searching and searching until we find something which is convincing and promising. Thank you very much, Nikolai. Thank you very much. You heard what he said? He said the basic, the most important thing in any business. Number one, understand the market, demand and competition. Number two, understand the product, features, uh, benefits, and so on. Once he understands all these things, he's going to the suppliers, and he's looking for opportunity where he can find a better product, right? A, a, a product that can have a better features. 
with a better price so we can also make profit and even be competitive. So guys, this is, was my goal here today. First of all, summarize what happened in e-commerce last year and, and where we are going in 2019. Second, put you in mind that you have to invest to research. You have to know the number before you start. So guys, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here today. And again, thank you to George and Nikolai. And uh, that's it, guys. Who is the next to speak, Nikolai? If you have questions, anything, feel free to ask me. Oh, Nikolai is here.